Hello and thank you for tuning in. I'm James Cleveland. And I'm Emberly McCullough. Tonight we have a special episode, Know Your Rights. All over the country, people are being harassed by police officers. In many instances, people do not know their rights. In any situation, you could be stopped and questioned by a variety of law enforcement, including state or local police officers, Joint Terrorism Task Force members, federal agents from the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, which includes Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the Border Patrol, the Drug Enforcement Administration, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, or other agencies. Well, seems like there are quite a few um, law enforcement agencies out there that people have to worry about. I mean, it seems like there's just so many. Um, and, and how, you know, how do you know who is on the Joint Terrorism Task Force is a question I would like answered. Um, you just, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they comprise different um, law enforcement officers from different agencies, don't they? Yeah, and like, uh, we just had Pumpkin Fest here in Keene. Uh, there were Keene police, uh, there were the county sheriff, uh, state troopers, there were police from uh, Troy, mm. um, possibly others that I didn't see or notice. Uh, a lot of police out this weekend. Yeah, and I've seen um, several different police uh, officers from different cities. Like when I was in Concord, um, and we did the, uh, we filmed the um, checkpoint, the DUI checkpoint there, there were officers from all over the county, from Hillsborough County, all, all over the, and I didn't even know some of those cities. And uh, I was asking one of the police officers, I'm like, well, how come there are so many different police officers here from different departments? And he said, well, they all participate. You know, it's a, it's a joint task force, DUI task force that we have. So it looks like a lot of <clears throat> agencies work together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you got your county ones that work together and you know, the various cities and stuff like that. So it, it just seems like we have to be ever vigilant um, when, when we're out in the public because you never know where jurisdictions lie anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that people need to think about. All right, so you have the constitutional right to remain silent. In general, you do not have to talk to law enforcement officers or anyone else. Even if you do not feel free to walk away from the officer, you are arrested or you are in jail. You cannot be punished for refusing to answer a question. It is a good idea to talk to a lawyer before agreeing to answer questions. In general, only a judge can order you to answer questions. There are two limited exceptions to the general rule about Ans not answering questions. First, in some states, you must state your name to law enforcement officers if you are stopped and told to identify yourself. But even if you give your name, you're not required to answer other questions. Second, if you are driving and pulled over for a traffic violation, the officer can require you to show your license, vehicle registration, and proof of insurance. However, you do not have to answer other questions. Now, I, you probably have a ton of traffic stops, but there's one encounter that I had. I was driving in April 2011 uh, on Interstate 75 in Georgia. And I, I was driving the moving vans. So it's not even my vehicle. Yeah. And I was pulled over. I was going 10 under because it's a moving van. It's a very large vehicle. Mm -hmm. It was fairly late at night, but the officer did, never told me his name. He never told me why he pulled me over. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't smart enough to not answer his questions. We did refuse the uh, permission to search our vehicle. Good. However, they brought a drug dog and they handcuffed us and put us in the back and of course they searched it. They said the drug dog alerted. And I was actually very nervous because it's not even my car. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a moving van. I don't know what's in there. I, I didn't search every nook and cranny before I took it out. So if they had found right. something, it would have been disastrous for me. Right, and that's one of the things that, especially if you are in a job where you're transporting other people's products or you know providing a service in that manner, um, yeah, you know there are times when you won't know what at all is in your in the vehicle that you're you're driving. Um, so that's a that's a very scary thing to have happen. And um, I've been involved in Georgia specifically when I lived in Georgia. <clears throat> There's a small town in Georgia that I used to have to drive through to go back and forth to work. And every Friday night, they would have DUI checkpoints. Every mm. Friday night. And every Friday night, I got stopped in the DUI checkpoint. 
uh, they were convinced because I love stickers on my car. It's just something I've always loved and I've always had a bunch of stickers all over my car. And uh, they always thought that, you know, I must have been some kind of drug addict or something um, <laughs> because every time I went through that checkpoint, they always made me stop and get out and they would try to search my car. And this was also before I knew really that I did not have to consent to a search because they didn't have probable cause. Um, and, and I, you know, eventually they wore me down and I let them look in my car and I told them, I said, you're not going to find anything because I don't do drugs. You know, I mean, the, the, I drink beer. Mm -hmm. And look, yes, I have a six pack of beer in my car where it's supposed to be, where I can't reach it, and none of the bottles are open. They still made me do the drunk walk, though. And it, I, I was very upset, and I eventually went to the um, police, of ch the, the chief of police in that town, and complained. And apparently, a lot of other people had been complaining about it, too, because there was no randomness at all involved in this checkpoint. It was you know, the same people were getting harassed every week, in and mm -hmm. out, in and out, in and out. Um, as for getting pulled over, I've only been pulled over maybe three times in my entire driving career, and I have never volunteered any information except for my, um, you know, required documents that you have to turn over. But, you know, it's important for people to know that they don't have to answer questions, because if you don't know, then you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Yeah, generally I think the the best tactic to use is to remain silent but you can be nice and you can choose which questions you're going to answer but sure you should be very careful because anything you say may incriminate you and you may not even realize like if you're saying were you on this street 10 minutes ago and you say yes and say well and then they arrest you because right. they're saying we're looking for someone that just committed armed robbery so even if you have done nothing wrong like it's beneficial not to actually answer any questions. Exactly, exactly. Well, now we have a video from the creators of Flex Your Rights. Do you know your rights when you're stopped by the police? Unfortunately, most people don't, and the consequences can be serious. From illegal searches to excessive force, anyone can be a victim. Filmmakers Steven Silverman and Scott Morgan are fighting to stop this. They've made a terrific movie called 10 Rules for Dealing with the Police. Here's a clip. Relax. God, I didn't do anything. You got a bad attitude. Now, I pulled you over because you were swerving between lanes. That's all. Now, you got a choice here. If you cooperate, you're going to make things a whole lot easier on yourself. Now, what that means is you got to be straight with me. You understand? Yeah. Here's the deal. You don't speak unless I ask a question. You understand? Yeah. All right. Oh, that hurts, man. That's too tight. Relax. You're fine. Now, where are you coming from? College. I'm coming home from college, man. You've been having problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines in there, are you? No. No, sir. So you don't mind if I take a look? Ah, uh, go ahead. All right, Darren, you just relax. Don't move. Just relax. Don't move. Stephen Scott, welcome to, to Freedom Watch. This is a, a, an important movie. We just showed a small dramatic clip. There's a lot of other things in there that show police abuse and show what the law is and what you have a right to do. Why did you make this movie? Well, the reason we made this movie is because we found that most people just really were completely terrified uh, during police encounters. And this manifests itself in, in one of two ways. Most people would completely roll over, would wave their rights at the point of a police encounter, but also some people out of their fear and frustration would wind up acting out right. uh, during a police encounter. So we really realized we needed to create something that went beyond the little, you know, the wallet cards that many people may have seen and really took this thing and made it more compelling and created scenarios that people can relate to when they see it. All right, and Scott, what you created was the 10 rules. We're going to throw them up on the board. Mm -hmm. Some are common sense. Some are things that people uh, basically need to be reminded of. Always be calm and cool. Obviously, that makes sense. You have a right to remain silent. Now, if mm -hmm. the police ask you for your driving credentials, you obviously have to give that to them. But right. if they say, where are you coming from and where are you going, you don't have to reply. What's the best way not to reply? 
Well, you know, that's up to you. And with those sort of where are you going kind of questions, that's really tricky to deal with because you don't want to seem evasive right at the beginning of the encounter. But I think the most important thing for folks to understand is once it gets to the point of, hey, can I look around in your car? What do you have in the trunk? That's the kind of stuff that you really have All right, to watch out for. That's one of the rules. That's rule number three. You have right. a right to refuse searches. Right. So when the police say, I see that bag on the front seat, I want to look in it, or would you mind mm -hmm. popping the trunk for me? What's the appropriate response? Officer, calmly. Officer, I know you're just doing your job, but I don't consent to any searches. And you might have to repeat this, and the officer might reply with, well, you don't have any bombs or, or guns in the trunk. What do you have to hide? You don't mind if I take a look, do you? And they'll keep asking, but this is actually not a command. It sounds like a command, but it's actually technically a request, and you have every right to refuse that search. And we advise that you do it. Say, calmly, officer, I have nothing to say until... And the police will, will famously say, as Steve just said, you have nothing to hide. What are you worried about? What's the response to that? I have my dignity. I have my privacy. And there's the law. Well, you can do that, right? And, you know, for us, you know, you don't want to get in an argument with the officer about it. But, you know, you can just calmly state your refusal, and if they keep challenging you, you don't have to answer additional questions. Ha has the, has the movie had an effect? Is it getting out there? Are you getting feedback that Absolutely. people are doing, uh, are standing on their rights? Right. When we first started this work back in 2002, the most common response was, after people watched our, you know, our, our first video, was, oh, man, I wish I had known this. Right. I really was humiliated and hassled, and, and if I'd only known my rights, it would have been a much better situation for me. And now we are getting, yes, I asserted my rights, and, and I simply drove away with a ticket. I'm going to tell you, I've seen the movie, I watched it, I loved it, it's right on the law, and everybody should see it. Steve Silverman, Scott Morgan, thanks for your... And now we're back. Um, I highly recommend that if you can, you should watch that film. It's called uh, Ten Rules for Dealing with the Police. It's put out by the organization FlexYourRights.org. Yeah, it's a very helpful um, video that, that really gives you a lot of great information about you know, how to deal with the police and what you should say, what you should not say, how you should act, um, what the police can ask you and what they can't ask you, whether they can search your vehicle or not, what probable cause you know, is and isn't. So it's a great educational film, and um, I know I've watched it, and I've had my son watch it as well. Um, and I you know, encourage everyone to watch it because it is a great informative film. Yeah, and, and these, you know, because police will use tactics to get you to consent to do things that you don't want to. And, you know, above, and, above it, all of it, you have to remember that anything that you do or say, you know, can, can be held against you. And that you just never know who's had access to your car. I mean, if you've taken it to the mechanic that day, you know, and, and you've left it there for six hours, I mean, how many people have had access to your vehicle that day? You know, so... Yeah, one thing too, I think it's the rule number one: be calm and cool. And I'd add, you should you should be very nice, especially if you just want the encounter to end. Right. Because if you if you're rude, they may view that as you're challenging their authority, and they they could become hostile, and then then you have a very bad situation on yeah, your hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you should also try to film any encounter that you have with the police. Um, this helps to hold them accountable. Um, yes, very true. You know, and if, they're, you know, if they do something that they're not supposed to do, then you have proof, in essence, that they did something. Yeah, and in many instances, instances, police will stop people on the street and ask for identification. <laughs> we have a video from Flex Your Rights on this. What if police come up to me just asking for ID? Hey, hold on, man. Let me see your ID. Carrying an ID is required when you're driving, but there's otherwise no law requiring you to carry an you ID. But in some states, police can require you to give your name if they have reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in criminal activity. How do you know if police have reasonable suspicion? Remember, Police need reasonable suspicion to detain you, so one way to tell if they have reasonable suspicion is to ask if you're free to go. Hey, hold up, man. Let me see your ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? I just want to talk to you, man. What's your name? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? I'm not detaining you, man, but 
I promise I'm clean. I sure don't rush, got time man. to chat. Gotta go. What if they don't let me go? Then you're being detained because the officer thinks there's some reason to suspect you of a crime. Let's use some ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you detaining me? Am I free to go? Turn around. Put your hands up on the wall. In that situation, you could be arrested if you refuse to reveal your identity. Technically, police can't make you identify yourself anytime they want. But on the street, withholding your identity frequently leads to a detention or even an arrest. If your goal is to just get the encounter over with, then identifying yourself might be your best option. But if you're prepared to fight things out in court, you can flex your rights by refusing to cooperate with random ID requests. Yeah, in New Hampshire, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no law that requires you to give uh, your identification to the police, provided you're not driving or anything. Now, now, I would say if you're just walking, you're at a big advantage because if you're driving, they can say, well, you were swerving, and if they want to know who you are, they can pull you over. And even walking's not a sure thing, though, because they say, well, you're jaywalked, or they could basically come up with some well, law that you didn't even know you violated. Right. Well, a friend of mine um, and I were coming out of a club. This was about two years ago. It was pretty late at night, and we happened to see um, this young man in a truck being harassed by police officers. So we stopped, and he, my friend started filming. And the, the police, this is in Tampa, Florida, and the police were um, all right with us filming. Uh, and then uh, the security guard, one of the security guards, got a little upset with us. And uh, the police then decided they were going to come over and ask for our IDs. Well, when we didn't show them our IDs, I did not get arrested, but my friend did. He actually got arrested for failure to show ID, um, which was the reason the police said they arrested him, but was not on the actual arrest report when we got a copy of the re arrest report. So he told me, you know, my friend did, he said, from now on, whenever you're out walking, um, don't carry your ID with you. You know, just leave it, leave it at home or leave it, because you don't need it unless you're going to go somewhere where you possibly might need your ID. So, you know, it's, if you don't have it, they obviously can't arrest you for not showing it. So. Yeah, that's one unfortunate thing about, like, you have to have an ID if, like if you go to a bar and they're going to card you, mm -hmm. you, you know, even people that look well over 21, you know, let's say the grocery mark, they're going to card you because they don't want to get in trouble. Right. And, and they have, you know, a lot of these stores have these mandatory, if you're under 30, uh, new requirements. I, and in some places, there are actual laws where you have to show ID to purchase um, tobacco and uh, alcohol. And so that forces people into carrying their ID with them all the time. So it's a, it's a slippery slope that we find ourselves on, you know, with carrying ID or not carrying ID. It can sometimes keep you from doing some of the things you might want to do if you decide not to carry it. All right, in today's reality, um, many of us could be asked to meet officers for a counterterrorism interview. You have the right to say that you do not want to be interviewed, to have an attorney present, to set the time and the place for the interview, to find out the questions they will ask beforehand, and to only answer the questions you feel comfortable answering. If you are taken into custody for any reason, you have the right to remain silent. No matter what, assume that nothing you say is off the record. And remember that it is a criminal offense to knowingly lie to an officer. Right. So it, it's a criminal offense for us to lie to the police. So if we knowingly tell a lie to the police, then we can get in a whole heap of trouble. But yet the police are allowed to lie to, you know, regular citizens all the time. And they do it all the time. I mean, you, you even see it on all the... Uh, the law enforcement shows where the police lie to people all the time. So it's a bit of a strange situation where they're allowed to lie to us and mm -hmm. we're not allowed to lie to them, you know. Yeah, I definitely think you should keep that in mind as well. Like if they tell you like, oh, just just tell us where the weed is and we'll we'll let you go. It's not a big deal. Like anything that they say, I wanted in writing like to me, yes. that's the only way to actually protect yourself. Definitely. Don't take the police officer's word for it. That is for mm -hmm. sure. Because, you know, 
and, and a lot of people don't know that they're allowed to, to tell you lies and, and trick you into, um, I mean, there's a lot of cases out there now about um, false confessions um, where the police have lied to people and threatened them and they have given false confessions you know, to crimes that they did not commit, that someone else did. And that's a terrible, terrible thing to have happen. So just realize, everyone out there, you need to realize that the police are not always your friends, especially if you're in custody. Don't believe anything that they say. Get it in writing. Definitely get it in writing. Yeah, be very nice to them, and they may be nice to you, and they may be friendly, but like you said, realize they're not your friends, and their job is to make arrests, to get people yeah. in trouble. You know, their job is really not to help the public, I would argue. Not anymore. I, you know, the, it used to be that police were known as peace officers, but anymore, you don't hear that term anymore. You hear law enforcement officers or what, you know, some of us call Leos. You know, you, you don't see really peace officers anymore. And that's a very sad way, you know, way that the world has gone because, you know, it's funny because um, if you ever watch like any Los Angeles shows um, where they show police officers cars, mm -hmm. it says protect and serve, you know, the community, but that's not really what they're doing anymore. You know, they're, they're money making in, in a lot of ways. They're pulling people over just to give them tickets and, and collect revenues. Or, or this weekend, they were arresting a lot of people for being under the age of 21 and having an alcoholic beverage, which is totally ridiculous in my opinion. Well, it's completely arbitrary to to have minimum age requirements for alcohol. I mean, in Europe, there in, in lots of places around the world, there are either no age limits or the age limit is at 16. Um, the United States is only one of a handful of countries that forces people to wait until they're 21 to be able to drink alcoholic beverages. So. You know, all these rules are arbitrary, but you have to know what you're dealing with so that you don't get into trouble. All right, if you're stopped by police while driving, keep your hands where the police can see them. You must show your driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance if you are asked for these documents. Officers can also ask you to step outside of the car, and they may separate passengers and drivers from each other to question them and compare their answers. But no one has to answer any questions. The police cannot search your car unless you give them consent, which you do not have to give or unless they have probable cause to believe, i.e. knowledge of facts sufficient to support a reasonable belief that criminal activity is likely taking place, that you have been involved in a crime, or that you have evidence of a crime in your car. If you do not want your car searched, clearly state that you do not consent. The officer cannot use your refusal to give consent as a basis for doing a search. Yeah, one thing I'd recommend, if you're gonna get pulled over, like if there are passengers in your car, perhaps you should tell them like, you know, hey, don't answer any questions, uh, let me do all the talking. Mm -hmm. Like if you're comfortable, more comfortable than a passenger that dealing with the police, y you should take charge and... Definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely take charge and, you know, you have plenty of time between when the car, you know, when you get pulled over and the police actually get to, you, to your door. So, you know, yeah, definitely communicate with your passengers and tell them, you know, they don't have to say anything, that they shouldn't say anything and that you should do all the talking. Yeah, and if you're, one of your passengers, let's say they had contraband, like let's say they have a joint, mm -hmm. and they put it in the car, and then they're not going to claim responsibility, as the driver, you're responsible That's true. for everything in your car, so That's you're going to be true. the one that even, gets charged. Even if the car is not legally registered to you, if you are driving the car, That's very you are responsible. Yeah. So you should be aware of that, even if it's not your vehicle and they find something. Now, if you are arrested, the officer must advise you of your constitutional rights to remain silent to an attorney and to have an attorney appointed if you cannot afford one. You should exercise all these rights even if the officers don't tell you about them. Do not tell the police anything except your name. Anything else you say can and will be used against you. Ask to see a lawyer immediately. Within a reasonable amount of time after arrest or booking, you have the right to a phone call. Law enforcement officers may not listen to a call you make to your lawyer but they can listen to calls you make to other people. You must be taken before a judge as soon as possible, generally within 48 hours of your arrest at the latest. Now I did, I just assumed that if I made a phone call from jail that they would actually listen to the call. Me too. I did not know if you called your lawyer that they're not supposed to listen. That is a very interesting piece of information. Well, you know, the attorneys um, are protected you know, they have protected speech when they're talking to their clients. So if 
they were listening and on your conversation with your lawyer, uh, that would be a breach of confidentiality and they could be severely reprimanded, I mean, if, if they were caught doing it. Um, but, you know, be aware that when you make a phone call from jail or, you know, really anywhere in the court system at any time that you could be listened to. So, yeah, just be aware of that. Yeah, it's kind of funny, like, um, they say that you don't have the right to record them, but they're, they're going to record you. Right. I At mean. all times, yes. <laughs> all right. Law enforcement officers can search your home only if they have a warrant or your consent. In your absence, the police can search your home based on the consent of your roommate or a guest if the police reasonably believe that person has the authority to consent. Law enforcement officers can search your office only if they have a warrant or the consent of the employer. If your employer consents to a search of your office, law enforcement officers can search your workspace whether you consent or not. Yeah, most places I've worked, um, they usually say like, we have the right to search your, the employer claims the right to search your car. We yeah. have the right to let I've the police mm -hmm. search the car. So I would be very careful what you, you bring to your workplace. Anything that can get you in trouble, I recommend that you don't bring that. Right, and my employment contract for the last company that I worked for, um, you know, even though we have the constitutional right to bear arms, I was not allowed to bring my gun onto work property. Um, even if I had a concealed carry permit, I wasn't allowed to bring it onto my work property, and if I did, I could be fired. Hmm. They had, they had every right to search, you know, it was in my contract, they had every right to search my car at any time or my desk. Yeah, if a law enforcement officers knock on your door, instead of opening the door, ask the door if they have a warrant. If the answer is no, do not let them into your home and do not answer any questions or say anything other than, I do not want to talk to you. If the officers say that they do have a warrant, ask the officers to slip it under the door or to show it to you. Uh, if your door is open only enough to see the warrant, if you feel you must open the door, then step outside and close the door behind you and ask to see the warrant. Tell the officers if they're at the wrong address or if you see some other mistake in the warrant. And remember that an immigration warrant of removal deportation does not give the officer the authority to enter your home. All right, so this is only really a fraction of the information that's out there for you to access. For more information, please visit Flex Your Rights and uh, org. So most of the information tonight also came from the document Know Your Rights put out by the ACLU. Please note there is a specific section uh, dedicated to non-citizens. For more news and analysis, join us next week. I'm James Cleveland. And I'm Emberly McCullough. May you each find happiness, peace, and prosperity.